Hi, it's Adam Hill, editor of ITS International, and welcome to the latest edition of our In Focus series. And this time it's on road usage charging, RUC. We asked Benoit Rossi of Emovis why RUC, road usage charging, is required. Well, I mean, figures speak for themselves. Um, according to a recent report by the OECD, uh, revenues generated by fuel taxes in Europe between 1995 and 2020 have dropped by more than 50%. Right now, uh, fuel taxes contribute to only 4.4% of all taxes raised by government, as opposed to um, 10% only 15 years ago. The reason for this uh, drop are very well known. First, it's the um, fuel uh, efficiency of the cars, and the second one is, of course, the uh, rise of electrical vehicles. And this, uh, just to give you an example, fuel efficiency in, in Europe alone has increased and improved by 28% in the last uh, 20 years. That situation will become worse in the years to come because Europe has also set an ambitious plan of reaching carbon neutrality by 2050. So as a result of this, the status quo is not an option. And in fact, the OECD is urging policymakers and government to implement distance-based charge, which we also call roadier charging, in a short run. So what are the key drivers behind road usage charging? Well, one of the challenges that will arise when we start talking about the nationwide roadier charging scheme is the revenue compliance. Revenue compliance is, of course, very important when you use a tool to finance a piece of infrastructure, such as a tunnel or a bridge like the UK as a gateway bridge, which costs about 700 million to build. The revenue compliance becomes vital when you start collecting billions of revenue. Take the example of the UK. The UK Treasury is talking about £35 billion pound of annual revenue to be collected to compensate for the fuel taxes. So, and we know as toll operator that the revenue compliance is very much linked to the social acceptance of the scheme. New tolls are better accepted and timely paid for when road users understand why they are paying for the tolls. Um, that's why it's very important that the policy goals are well um, articulated and timely conveyed to the public before the start of the scheme. Now, the challenges with nationwide RAP program is that this is going to impact millions of users, in reality, the entire population of the country. And that's going to be a huge challenge that government will have to tackle. And in that respect, the uh, OECD report um, mentions the uh, usefulness of pilots, which some of them are run by Imavis, to educate the public about the need for introducing a new road policy, um, new road charging policy. And what are the major pitfalls then to introducing RUC? Well, the second challenge that will rise with nationwide uh, REC program is linked to the notion of out-of-state drivers, which means how to address and tackle foreign cars traveling into a country where a REC program is in operation. The same question would apply with domestic drivers that are traveling outside the state. And these aspects are not much talked about right now, but will become essential for ensuring um, the wide acceptance of the program. And we have to make sure that foreign drivers do pay their share and make sure that domestic drivers are not unduly charged. And this is very much a, a key element for the success of the program. And we can certainly look at the way this has been tackled uh, in Europe uh, by looking at our uh, tractoring charge, for instance, uh, which uh, address some of those aspects. And finally, let's say that a, a government in a European country, perhaps, decides that it's going to set up a road usage charging scheme nationally. How quickly could it get up and running? What are the practicalities? Well, I think the way forward for any country in Europe uh, that wishes to introduce a road scheme, there are three elements. The first one is that rights are essential 
to achieve Europe's uh, road decarbonation goal and to ensure uh, the sustainability of the road network in the long run. The second aspect is that the European policymaker should really take advantage of the existing toll regulatory framework, I'm thinking about, for instance, the EU directive, and uh, look at what the US is right now doing with their different pilots. And the third element is that it requires a public and private approach. It's not possible to have a nationwide right scheme uh, purely uh, publicly run and, and set up. I think it's very important that public and private do work together in order to achieve and design an efficient and widely accepted program. And that's it. Thank you very much to Benoit Rossi for answering our questions. Thank you for watching. And if you would like to like and subscribe, just follow the links below.